Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me here at Faces of Life Inspiration Entertainment. My name is Terza Andrews. Thank you so much for chiming in. I'm going to be introducing today on our show, Miss Linda Joyce, and she is an author of Surviving on Broken Pieces. In Surviving on Broken Pieces, Arthur Linda Joyce is a transparent is transparent about her personal and painful uh, incidences that she endured throughout her life. From negative comments to being rejected and holding on to unforgiveness, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me, is a lie, Linda says. They do hurt. She survived the painful words and suicidal thoughts that nearly drove her off several bridges throughout her life. Linda's story will help heal the hearts of those who feel outcast, overlooked, or believed that they do not fit in. These written words of encouragement offer hope, restoration, and an open invitation to set your hearts free. Okay, so hopefully we'll be able to get her back on the line and she'll be joining us here soon. Wow, what an amazing story. Um, one thing that most people don't know about um, myself is that um, I wrote this book, The Phases of Life, uh, Phases of Life, um, Overcoming, it talks about overcoming your adversities and following your dreams. And it appears to be the very same thing that Linda has done in her book, uh, Surviving the Broken Pieces. And so once we get her online, we'll be able to hear her testimony. Uh, I've even thought, you know, uh, I never said I'm gonna drive myself off a bridge or anything like that, but I did uh, think what would happen or what would what would happen if I drove myself off a bridge. I mean, when I was in my 20s, a lot of times when uh, we're going through uh, struggles in life, we um, forget that there are other people in our lives that are um, subject to our pain. Hold on one second. Let me make sure Linda has the correct information. Hold on one second. Okay, so we're going to try to get her in here and hopefully um, we'll be able to move forward with the interview. Um, sometimes when we um, try to get things done, things don't always pan out the way you want them to pan out. And one thing about me is that I'm a perseverer. I'm going to persevere. I'm going to move forward. I'm going to keep moving, uh, in, in the direction I believe that I'm supposed to go. Um, this is, um, a great opportunity to interview Linda, um, Joyce, who is the author of Surviving on Broken Pieces. And so, um, I think all of us have experienced negative comments, you know, going through life. Um, sometimes we uh, make decisions in life that um, cause us to make um, wrong, de wrong decisions. And um, some of the things that we do, did in our past, people are now uh, success, uh, uh, assess what is the word, um, mm, successful to? Uh, the word is, you know, it's more accepting now than back, you know, when uh, I was young. Um, I had spoke uh, one time about uh, some things that I went through in my life and how embarrassed I was. And um, I wanted to be able to, to share uh, a little bit about that on another uh, time, but hopefully we'll be able to get um, Miss Linda Joyce on the line and she'll be able to tell you her testimony about surviving on broken pieces, um, holding on to unforgiveness. Oh man, that's, that's a major thing because um, when we get hurt, in our past, we often hold on to those things. If somebody says something wrong to us or did something something to us, we hold on to that. Um, if somebody called us names, um, I, I, I was talking to one of my cousins one time. He used to call me Valentine Face. And uh, he said he used to tease me because he loved me. And I was like, that ain't love. That ain't how you're supposed to treat nobody. <laughs> but I understood it. You know, I understood, you know, that little boys, they tease little girls that they like. And so uh, now, but I didn't know that then, you know. Um, so um, he would just call me names and stuff. And uh, I told him, you was a mean little boy. You used to uh, scratch me with little, uh, uh, would you remember those sticker brown branches? The one with the little pointers on the end? He would pluck them off to the shrubbery and walk past you and scratch you with it. <laughs> 
I'm like, man, that hurt. You know, stuff like that. But we talked about it. I, I, you know, I love them. And, you know, we talk about stuff like that. You forgive people that do things to you. But if you don't um, deal with the pain of your past, you can't move into your future. So I'm really grateful uh, for the opportunity to get to uh, interview Miss Linda. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to get her on the line here shortly so that she can talk about her own painful uh, uh, past, you know, to be able to to go through um, what she's been through and to still come out and tell the story. A lot of people don't make it out. You know, they don't make it out to tell the story. Some people go through abusive situations, uh, uh, rape. <clears throat> I was telling uh, somebody, I want to have a conversation about how a person, can you get raped by your husband? <laughs> hmm? Do you think you can be raped by your husband? I think so. Especially if yeah, it was an estranged marriage and uh, you don't want to be entangled like that. And then they return and then it happens. And you're like, you know, I feel like if you don't want to be touched in a way, there's no conversation, there's no, hey, how you doing? Or, you know, let's talk about what happened. None of that is just you, my wife, and you don't tell me no, and boom. Well, those conversations need to be had because um, I don't think that should take place. And that's from my own personal experience. Um, we talk about painful words. Um, I was called when I was uh, size 22. Uh, 24, I was called, uh, you know, people used to ask me if I was pregnant all the time. And I'm guilty for asking a woman if she's pregnant, you know, she's got a, a big stomach or whatever. She looking cute, got a little dress on or whatever. And you ask her if she's pregnant, the answer is no. You don't mean that in a, in a, a, a hurtful way, but we think about it stays in our subconscious. And the mere fact that I said it and I had experienced it as a big girl, it's, that stays with me. And I apologize immediately you know, to the lady, because I know what I felt like. I remember that, you know what I'm saying? Being called, my na called out of my name, you know, uh, big cow, heifer, or whatever. Um, that's not a good feeling for people to call you out of your name. And so, you know, we can say all we want to say under our breath, but when you tell somebody something that's going to affect them for the rest of their life, that's a, that's a horrible feeling. So um, let's see. Oh, she said that she had a feeling of being outcast and overlooked. And um, she believed that she didn't fit in. And, um, and so she's written about all of those things and hopes of uh, bringing hope and restoration. And um, she said she wanted to help set other people's hearts free. So let's see what she has to say. And hopefully we'll be able to get her in in just a moment. So hold on one second. We'll be right back. Okay, so we're going to try to uh, get her online and hopefully she'll be able to chime in. Um, anytime I've tried to um, do a uh, live interview, it's always been an a issue, but I don't mind because number one, uh, in life, whenever you're trying to succeed in a situation or uh, in a new career, there's always going to be challenges, but you can't allow yourself to fall prey to giving in or giving up. And just like uh, in, in her book, she talks about um, uh, hope, giving hope to people and stuff like that. Well, you can't give up whenever you're looking to uh, inspire people. And uh, I appreciate her trying to chime in and uh, <laughs> um, trying to log on and, and get connected with us here so that you all can get to meet her. and. Um, that would be so awesome if we can uh, get her online. So we'll see what happens. Okay. Let's see what happens. Hmm. Okay. Uh, all right, Miss Joyce. I sent her a link and so hopefully you know, she'll be able to uh, chime on. Okay. All righty, surviving the broken pieces. Let's see. 
If you all want to uh, connect with Miss Linda Joyce, you can uh, connect with her on uh, on Facebook. Um, Linda Joyce, her name is spelled L-Y-N-D-A, Joyce, J-O-I-C-E. Um, so her um, Facebook link is HTTPS semicolon forward slash forward slash www.facebook.com forward slash Linda J dot 2020. Okay, so here we here we are. Look like we got her. Hello, are you there? Hello, are you there? I'm here. All right, yay! <laughs> no worries. Oh, hey, listen, one thing I know for sure, I was just telling my uh, viewing audience is that when you're trying to accomplish something, you cannot give up. You can't give in. You have to keep mo moving forward. So we want to get to the to the nuts and bolts of, of Linda, okay? We want to talk about your beautiful um, uh, uh, um, book. Okay, surviving on broken pieces, and so I had to discard uh, the other interview and right. move forward with this interview. So um, again, this is Linda Joyce, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give her a round of applause. Whee! Thank you, thank you, we thank you. We appreciate you coming out, and uh, if you don't um, mind, um, where would you want people to reach out to you? I can be reached on Facebook, Linda J. Sanders, or either Linda J. Joy, Linda Joyce, L Y N D A J O I C E. Very good. I can also be received, uh, found on Instagram. I am the Praying Visionary, P R A Y I N G V I S I O N A R Y. Very good, very good. Well, welcome to the show. Um, I want you to go ahead and begin to give your uh, just a few nuts from your book uh, so that people can run out and get it. Uh, where, where would they be able to find it? Well, since you're not in Philadelphia, you'll have to get it off of Amazon. Okay. Um, Amazon.com, and you just basically put in the title, and it will pop up. Okay. Surviving on Broken Pieces, and it is by Linda Joyce. Very good. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, without further ado, she's going to give us a little uh, testimony about something that you will be able to find out in the book. And um, like I had read before about the sticks and stones may break your bones, but words yeah. never hurt you. And I had told you, <laughs> I had told you that um, I had said that in one of my books or in, in, a, in a podcast or something, because that's a lie. And that's a lie. It that's, is a lie. Yeah. Where is the lie? lie? I don't know who, I don't know where that came from, but I know there's a whole lot of old sayings, basically, that, mm -hmm. you know, our ancestors said that weren't necessarily true. They thought they were doing their best, but, you know, words have life. Oh, my God. They have yes. power. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just like you could say negative things over a person, you can say positive things as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And basically, I know that sticks and stones not only can break your bones, but they can also hurt your self-esteem, where a person can be hurt almost for years before they come out of, you know, that, that mutt, that yes, basically man. that ditch. You know, uh -huh. emotions, uh, mm -hmm. you know, mentality. Uh, and a lot of times we can heal quicker physically before we can heal emotionally and mm -hmm. mentally. So what was the one thing um, that hurt you as a child that you never, what, that, that never went away? It hurt you to the point where it stayed with you? Rejection. Rejection from? Well, um, I had therapy. Okay. There's nothing wrong with it. No, no. When I had therapy, I realized that thinking that maybe my mother did not want me. Mm -hmm. And I say that mainly because my mother gave birth to me when she was 37 years old. Oh, wow. Mm. Almost 40. 
she had I, other I children. like that shoot <laughs> I tell my kids don't have no kids send you your, your uh, mid 30s early 30s they're like dog that's too old I <laughs> said well if that's too old and I guess I'm old then because I heard had my last two children one was at 29 and one was at 30 so oh, okay okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah well I well I but the thing I think is the difference is my mother had older children mm-hmm my sisters and I are 12 plus years old, uh, separated. Okay. So I don't know what her mentality was, but to me, I know me personally, I would not want a child at 39 years old. Mm -hmm. Well, then with the gap, the 12 year exactly gap. Exactly, with that gap. Yeah. Yes. So you felt rejection by um, your mom because of the distance where you and the older you the you were the oldest like you had i'm the baby had them after you are you the baby i'm the baby i'm the baby so how you feel rejected well basically a lot of times i'm not noticed oh really i could come in i could come in a room well a lot of times when i would come in a room they would stop talking for one and i felt as though they were talking about me because why is all of a sudden y'all was talking and all of a sudden I come in the room? Right. And y'all stopped talking. Oh, and, wow. And that was one thing. And then also, too, they could be talking, but all of a sudden I'm start talking. They talk over top of me. So I felt invisible. Oh, that's awful. And then I went through different uh, feelings of depression. Yeah, you know, I had I had a family member tell me if I was as depressed as you are, I would kill myself. <gasps> and that was a close relative that said that. Oh, I'm so sorry. there was different things that I dealt with as a child, not understanding. You know, nobody really spent a whole lot of time with me. Yeah, so that's, you know, that's unbelievable. I thought uh, I thought the babies were the ones that they always say got all the attention. You're the well. Part they do say that, but I think it depends on the family. Because, I mean, I have a good family. I'm not talking against the family or anything. Right. But I just think that sometimes, depending on the family, and then my mother went through a lot her own self, you know. Yeah. She you did know, the best she could with what she knew. She didn't know. She, she did the know. best she could with what she Absolutely. knew. That's Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. She didn't know necessarily, and plus it wasn't in her. You can't right. give sometimes to what somebody. Okay. If one, you don't know how, and if it's not in you. Right, that's true. And, you know, her mother died when she was 12. Yeah. And she was yeah. shifted around, you know, to but siblings. But even if, if the mother hadn't died, because um, I was raised uh, by a single mother. She, was, she did a wonderful job with us. She kept us from being in the street. <laughs> that's for one. And okay. uh, she kept us from being uh, 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 tossed around to and fro didn't allow us to sit on men folk laps and that kind of stuff. I know that's right. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, she did a wonderful job of what she knew. She didn't have any children of her own. And so that okay. mother, what people consider the mothering uh, instincts that a mother should have, she didn't have, but she gave us what she knew and she loved that's us. Uh -huh. And she could tell us that she didn't love us because she took on four or five children that weren't her own. That's love. And so, um, a lot That's of love time, and compassion. Yeah, she had compassion on my daddy, <laughs> and she took care of us. I said she loved my dad enough to take care of his kids. I understand. You understand, and so, um, but when you go through that, you don't think about that as the one receiving whatever it is you feel like you're missing out on, or missing out on whatever you feel like you should have been receiving. Right. It stays correct. With you. Correct. And so when it stays with you, all you can think about is what you didn't get. All you can think about is how they treated uh -huh. you. All you can uh -huh. think about uh -huh. is how am I going to overcome this? And the only way you can overcome it is, for me, I had to put it in a book. With no disrespect and no pun intended about her being my stepmom. I couldn't have asked for a better mama. But I want people to understand that this, it's important. That's a major role to play as a stepmother to take on somebody else's kids. Just yes. like your, your biological mother, she did the best she could, but there were things still happening that she didn't know anything about. Exactly. You understand? Exactly. Well, that's not right. her fault. <laughs> that ain't right. her fault. Just like right. what I went through is not my mother's fault. You understand? Yes. I yes. 
I tell people you have to um, uh, take a, accountability and responsibility for your own life. How you dealt with it is how you dealt with it. You wrote a book. You wrote, wrote down. You wrote, wrote down. Yeah, I wrote. I wrote a book. And when I wrote that book, it was like you know, it hurt her. You understand? It hurt her, but I was letting her know it's a wonderful thing that people know that you're my stepmom because they, that that brings value to you. That's not that don't diminish who you are as my mother. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't diminish your mother because she did the things that happened to you that you had to overcome. You understand? Not at all. You had to yeah. That. Not at all. Yeah. So when you yeah. went through, when you felt like the people were um, dissing you or making you feel lesser than or felt like your words, because I can imagine your words felt like they weren't important. You know, just being an individual walking in a room and everybody shut up. <laughs> what? Like I thought they were trying to kill me. Wow. I thought they were trying to kill me because one incident, you know, what you think in that, and, you know, I had a very vivid imagination as a child, and I guess that's where the arts and stuff come out of me. Yeah. You know, even musical, uh, you know, I have musical talents as well. God, I'm one of those persons that, you know, God gave more than one. Me you know, too. Gift More than one gift. And um, I went in a room one time and an ice pick fell off of the top of the cabinet and it almost got me. What? And I said, I knew they were trying to kill me. Now so that was an accident. It was an accident, but you felt like they Absolutely. were trying to kill you. It was pointed to me. So just different things that happened and it probably was the enemy because the enemy, my mother will always say the enemy has been trying to kill you since birth because when I was two years old, Two months old, I almost died. Wow. I had a temperature of 102. Mm -hmm. And I had, um, every, my mother said every time they put me on a bed of ice, my temperature was so high at two months old. Wow. I would melt the ice. Wow. That's how high my fever is. She never told me why I had the fever. I don't know. You don't know why you had the fever? Yeah, I don't know why I had the fever. She never told me. But even, you know, I, I, I got burned. A, a lamp fell on my arm. Mm -hmm. I, have a, I still have a scar to this day. I was a, a baby then. So different things were happening to me oh, throughout I my life. I a scar on my arm. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I got a burn mark from here to up here, up above my elbow. It's a What? Scar. Wow. I don't know how, how it happened. I, I just... I can remember being by a furnace, that's it. And that was probably at my grandma's house out in the country somewhere. They had this, you know how the big old furnaces would be? In yes. The uh -huh. And it's hot, they stuck in it with wood. Yes, yes, think, yes, we had aunt, one, we used I, to have one. I think my aunt could have touched that, but I don't have any remembrance of the pain. I don't have any remembrance of it being wrapped. I don't have any memory of that. Mm. None. Mm -hmm. None. Wow. So I know what you mean by, you know, Stuff happening to you, you don't know why it's happening, but it yeah. happened. Yeah, and things was just always happening to me. I fell down the steps. You know, different things was was always. And and was I just, child as an adult, as a I would, my mother said I was three years old. And you fell down the steps. I fell down the steps. Oh wow! Fell down the steps, and she said, "When I got down to the third step, I jumped down on my feet." <gasps> what? So I tumbled up from the top of the steps all the way until I got to the third step. When I got down on the third step, I got rescued by God because that's the only because she couldn't. She said she went in. She you know she panicked and she's standing up there watching her three year old tumble down the steps and I'm tumbling, tumbling. Wow. And then I get to the third step. God caught me. That's all I can say. He's a and I got to the third step. Angels, holy angels caught you. Yes, ma'am. And jumped yeah. down on the third step on my feet. Oh, my God. And he's been rescuing me ever since. Wow. Did you write that story in your book? I'm not sure if I put that part in there. Now, I had so much stuff going on, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I know I put the burn in there and, you know, even cutting. And I used to inflict myself. You know, after this point, I was, I was going through 
a lot of uh, things as a teenager, you know, not understanding all these different mood swings. And, and I started, I didn't want to live no more. And that was when I was a teenager. I'm sorry. Why were you cutting yourself? I wanted to die. You're saying you inflicted pain just cutting yourself. I was trying to kill myself. Wow. Did you bleed out ever? Yes, ma'am. Every time. What? So you were slitting your wrist then. You weren't just, yes. you know, some people just, you know, they just take something and just be cutting. They have cuts on their arm like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It wasn't well, when like I was cutting was myself, bleeding. when I was cutting myself, I was bleeding, but I wasn't bleeding profusely. Right. But I was cutting myself enough to see blood and I would just sit in the bathroom. I had a, I had a, um, a fantasy about being in the bathroom and I would sit in the bathroom and I would have a razor and I don't know where I got the razor from, but I always had a razor. I think my father probably, probably was my father's razor because you know, he shaved himself. So I'm thinking that's where I probably got it from. And I would sit in the bathroom, close the door because you know, nobody else is really paying me no attention, especially with my siblings being older. Mm -hmm. Nobody was really watching me. I was the only one in the house at that point, you know, at a certain point. Mm -hmm. And I would just sit in the bathroom, just cutting myself and crying. And I didn't want to live no more. I was hurting. I was sad. um, I was alone. And I just was hurting, you know, people. I was bullied. Yeah. So I just didn't want, I didn't want to, you know, I felt like I was ugly. I felt fat. You know, it was just so many different ugliness that I felt. Mm-hmm. that I didn't want to feel those things anymore. And to me, the answer to that was to basically, you know, not live. And I know that there was purpose. I didn't know, but I know now that the enemy wanted to get rid of me because he knew I had people assigned to my life. Yes. Yes. Wow. Mm, 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 mm. So a part of the, uh, and I just want to go back, a part of the six and stones was those were your siblings. When you walked into the room, they would stop talking or just people. It was just family members. Just family members. Okay. Yeah, just family members. Okay. So that's what the part, they would call, would they call you names? Were, those, were they the ones that were calling you names? And No, they wasn't they calling me names because my family was very loving towards me. Uh-huh. Openly, they were. Uh huh. But you know, and they had a nickname for me. Uh huh. Well, so I was never, you know, treated. Uh, I was never really treated bad physically. It was just the actions more than anything that was offensive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And leaving me out of things, you know, because I'm the youngest. Nobody oh. has time for the baby. Oh. <laughs> they would go out leave me i wouldn't have nobody to talk to i wouldn't have nobody to play with you know those things wow huh that's amazing to me i just i just i mean you know your story your story my kids say that my baby got all the attention (laughs) well that's what they say they do say that they do say that yeah they say that yeah. But that's not the way I felt. And that's not the, I don't think she felt felt that way either. You know? Yeah. I mean, all of my children are, are spoiled to a certain degree. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I don't, I don't you know, uh, I remember my uh, middle child talking to me about, you know, how sad she was and how bad she felt and uh, dealing with depression and stuff like that. I don't, you know, we consider her to be ha- a happy child, you know what I'm saying? And uh, but you know, when she was in school, how people would say certain things in the N word. I remember going to the school and turning out the school about the N word towards her, you know. Um, so, um, both of my children encounter, encounter that. But one thing I try to teach my kids is that no matter what nobody else say about you, it's about what you say about you. That's right. They have to be taught. You have yeah. to renew your mind so your body will follow. The The word of God talks about uh, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm-hmm. Until I dealt with um, uh, my physical uh, attributes, not like liking my own physical attributes. And I had to learn how to love myself. You understand? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, sometimes we want other people to do for us, but what we need to do for ourselves. And mm-hmm. I'm one of those people. Yeah. yeah, and so uh, dealing with the pain of, uh, you know, I, I, I was single for a long time 
um, I was very promiscuous in my 20s, but not growing up in school because I didn't know if I wanted to be uh, with a man or not when I was in school. You understand what I'm saying? And that's just being real. But I thank God uh, that I learned the word of God and I kissed a boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's the boy that changed my mind. You know what I'm saying? Thanks. Well, amen. <laughs> and I'm grateful. I'm grateful okay. because I was embarrassed about the other stuff because of what had happened to me. That's what stayed with me. But when I learned the relationship between a boy and a girl, that was a whole different story. So mm -hmm. I had to learn how to love what I was created to be. A woman and there's nothing like being a woman <laughs> it's nothing like being a woman and it's, it's you know like it. uh, unfortunately some don't embrace it correctly yeah well that's why i said when you go through life and you deal with the the hurt and the pain of your past dealing with your sexuality and stuff like that i had to forgive the person that did me did something to me i had to forgive her and i had to forgive myself for enjoying it I had to forgive myself for because a, a part of you enjoy it, but a part of you say that's that's not the it's way. not right. Yeah, that's not right. But yeah. all of a, a lot of us don't have the courage to talk about those things, and that's why phases of life inspiration and entertainment is important. That's why what I do is so important because I want to deal with the nuts and bolts of why you are the way that you are, Linda. The why you're dealing with the pain. Have you actually gotten over the things that happened to you, and how do you plan on using what you have? been through to help restore that person to help encourage somebody else and, and and to give them hope and like you said you want to uh set their hearts free how do you plan on moving i know you've written a book but what's next what's next for linda joyce well there's a lot of things i believe that's still next um i believe that i am being conditioned to be a motivational speaker mm -hmm. for one mm -hmm. uh i also plan on having a, a youtube channel myself dealing with bullying yeah that's something i started doing in 2009 as far as having a um event youth event because i work with a lot of young people mm -hmm. and um i have a lot of young women around me Mm -hmm. So, you know, it to me is a daily thing. God puts people in my, you know, pathway. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes young people at my church, you know, I was an educator as well. Mm -hmm. So there would be young people. So there's opportunities, um, you know, even on Facebook, you know, use social media. Yes. I don't know for sure the polished look. Yes. God doesn't give it to me in a polished look. No, no. At all. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't know that you and I were going to meet. No. <laughs> God knew, mm -hmm. but I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And I find it very uh, miraculous sometimes how he connects me with people. Well, you what, know, it may not turn into a relationship. You just might see somebody on a, on a corner or something and yeah. that you might just give them a word of encouragement. Uh -huh. Sometimes I sit in the park. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, I'll see, and if I feel led to, I might just cut up. It may not come to them with a word of God. It's coming to them with compassion, mm -hmm. love, mm -hmm. and just acknowledging, you know, them, basically. Uh -huh. You know, mm -hmm. God knows what people need when yeah. we don't know. We don't know. And sometimes he'll place us just when that person comes along. Mm -hmm. So I always ask God to teach me to um, teachable moments yes well one thing i know for certain is that uh we clicked uh we and, did we sure did and, and, and i almost got put out <laughs> <laughs> they told me i was talking too much <laughs> what, what do you mean well you're not the only one you're not the only one you know um i don't I, think so no 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 uh, me too you know i um I told him it's unnatural. I said, you can delete this comment after I finish writing it, <laughs> but it feels un 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 unnatural to me to not reach out to people, to not say something to, to ignore them. It's not hard to say to them, I'm gonna say it, you can delete it, but I got to say what I got to say, you know, um, because it's, 
I feel like a lot of people are connected because of what they need. And you never know what a person needs until you get to talking to them. You understand? And when I started talking to you, I, and just hearing you say some of the things that you're saying, I was like, that ain't nothing but me. You like the arts. You like theater. I work with children. You love children. You got a call for children. I was doing working with children for 20 years. You know? Me too. Me and too. Kids. Even though mine was on the bus, I took the opportunity to uh, teach those children uh, life lessons. You know? Mm -hmm. Hold on. Let me see if I got my little book. I used to drive for CMS, and before I left CMS, I gave them this book. And the title of this book is How to Become a Model Studio Starting Today. And so, and it's got a little little bus uh, sign, a bus, uh, school bus on, on there. And what I did was, all the little things that I taught the kids on the bus, I put it in this little book. It's my, my farewell to them. Oh, you know? nice. Yeah, telling them certain things like um, how to be good, better, better than their own personal best. You know, everybody, nice. everybody treat everybody like you want to be treated. Little songs that I sang to them and stuff like that. Right, so, okay. <laughs> and so I think it's important that God put people together that are like minded. And I feel like that's why we were able to hit it off because I'm a We did. A walk yeah, we did. <laughs> Yeah, we sure did. And I said, well, why are y'all picking? I said in my mind, I said, why are y'all picking on me? But you know what? And it wasn't just you. I got a, I got a text, too. It wasn't just you, you. Well, I didn't think it was just me, but I felt, I, I basically felt that, you know, because I knew it was towards me. Mm -hmm. How is it y'all picking on, saying stuff to me and, and all these people are talking about all this other stuff? So I figured it wasn't me. But I also know, see, I learned not too long ago, maybe within the last five, that there are distractions yes. in this life. Mm -hmm. And the enemy will use anybody he wants to, mm -hmm. to distract you from getting your goal. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we just have to stay focused yes, on what we are planning to do and not allow others to get because you know it was told to me you know they're just trying to help and i said okay that's fine mm -hmm. and i just basically tuned out you know what they say about um eating the meat and spitting out the bones yeah <laughs> and that's what i basically learned try to do with that because i have a goal yeah and well, it's not just about just money goal. even <laughs> though i need it really badly but the fact that the other things that I need to get out of there, you know, the community, yeah. you know, the, 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 the learning, you know, the things that sort and not what I had to do was stop worrying about the money. Yeah. Cause it's not, I had to talk not to myself. You're glad that you're making money. You're glad that you're making money. You're able to do something uh, in your home or from home where you don't have to leave your house or anything like that. That's the beautiful part. It's not mm -hmm. about, because because it's not how much money you make because you're making enough to pay a bill or whatever that's you know that's good um but your ultimate goal is to brand yourself and to let people know who linda joyce is so that people can get the restoration so that people can get the encouragement so that people can get all the hope and the and the uh uh, uh help that they need in order to move to the next absolutely realize. You know, and so uh, I'm grateful for the platform for that particular reason because it gave me the opportunity to do what I do best, and that's to connect with people and talk with uh, people and uh -huh. get to the nuts and bolts of why uh, you're here and let the world know about it because that's why, why Faces of Life Inspirational Entertainment is here. We want people to learn about the people that's out here that's really trying to be transparent who's really trying to be authentic, who's out here trying to actually express their own uh, personal pain and, and let people know that you're not alone. You understand? You're not by yourself. I, right. I experienced it too. And uh, taking, t taking good care of yourself now and knowing that it's never too late. I wrote this book, um, uh, uh, um, You're the Key to Someone Else's Blessing. Talking mm -hmm. about bringing out your gifts, your talents and abilities. And I was just like you, you know, one of those people that I didn't just have one gift, I had multiple gifts. You know, uh, I didn't want to be a, 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 a jack of all trades and master of none. I've mastered how to communicate with people. You understand? I, I communicate with people from a place of transparency and authenticity where the world don't do that. And a lot of people in the world, when I comment on the people's uh, 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 posts and, and comment and, and engage with them, 
I'm engaging from a real place. You understand? Uh, if I like it, I like it. If I don't, I don't. I skip over it. If I don't have nothing positive to say, I'm just gonna skip over it because I don't right. want to say anything negative. I don't want to put any negative energy out there. You understand? Right. Yeah. So um, I really appreciate you giving me the opportunity to uh, sit here and um, communicate with you and get to see you face to face. Is there anything else you want the world to know about Joyce, uh, Linda Joyce? And I like how you spell your name too. Your mom did that, or you changed it? Elsa. Both. Both. Oh yeah, tell me how. Uh, my mother. I changed my the spelling of my first name because um, I admired someone's name. I admired someone's whose name was Lynn. Oh. L y n n. Uh huh. But my mother spelled my middle name J o i c e because she, she sounded it out, and that's the way she came up with the spelling. Okay, Joyce. Oh, J o i c e like boys, but Joyce. Correct. Okay, yeah. and Linda, I thought that, so it's Joyce is not your last name. No, ma'am. How about that? And you wrote your book in Linda Joyce. First, that's my first and middle name. That's beautiful. Yeah, I got rid of my last name for personal reasons. I can be transparent um, about that, but that's has nothing to do with the book. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that, that might be something you had to survive through, too, so whatever. Look, let me tell you, I'm still surviving from that, even though it's not, you know, abuse or anything like that. But um, there's just a lot of things going on in my life even now that I've decided that if it's not connected to purpose and if it's not positive, I'm cutting it off. Very good, very good. Well, it's been such a pleasure to sit here and talk with you today. I love you and I appreciate you so much for being a genuine sister, mm -hmm. a sister to reach out because you reached out to me from on the other side. You ain't come through the chat. You came through the other side, <laughs> side of the chat. So thank you so much. Thank yes, ma'am. You may the most I give you all that you desire for your life in Jesus' thank name. Thank you. I, I appreciate you. It. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Appreciate you. Thank you so I, I, much. Too, I truly believe that greatness is in your future. You keep doing well and know that you are the key to someone else's blessing. And I truly, truly admire you for standing up for what you believe in. Continue to share your stories and allow God to use you how he uh, sees fit. Because I, I'm for sure I see you over the top. God bless you. We'll see you Praise next Lord. time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We love you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.